Hi, I'm Peter Upvold, and this is the Stealth Mac Podcast. Welcome back to this series where I'm looking at the terminal within Mac OS X, and hopefully assisting users who are new to the command line become a little bit more familiar with it. In the first part of this screencast series, I introduced the terminal, and I showed some of the basics of how terminal commands are constructed, and I ran through a few basic commands. In this episode, I'm going to focus on doing basic file management tasks within the terminal. Now before we jump in, I'd like to ask that if you do find this useful or interesting, or if you don't, I'd love any and all feedback. It's going to help me decide whether to continue with this series or go in another direction. So please do send your feedback to feedback at thestealthmac.com. Having said that, let's get on with the screencast. So the first thing we'll need to do is open up the terminal application. So you need to go into your utilities folder inside applications, or you can go there to the go menu and choose terminal. And again, I've set this up deliberately to have the large font size and so on from last time so that you can see it easily. Now the first thing uh, we're going to look at, as I've said, we're going to focus on file management today. And the first thing I want to look at is how we move a file. Now for the purpose, I set up a folder called stuff with a few example test files that we can use just to move around and copy and so on. So let me first change directory into the stuff folder so we can start working on the items within that. So what I'll do first is I'm just going to list everything in my home directory. You'll see this stuff folder that I'm talking about is here. And to change into that directory, as we learned last time, we simply do cd space and then the name of the directory, stuff. So we're now in the right directory. If I run ls again to see what's in here, you'll see I have a file called example.txt. I have a folder called subfolder, and I also have an image file here. So we have a, a, just a few files that we can work with for, for the examples. So as I say, the first thing I want to do is show how to move files around. For example, if I wanted to move example.txt into this subfolder, so I'm going to move it from where it is now, just in the stuff folder, to where it is in the subfolder, then I use the command mv. Now, just before I'm going to do this, what I'm actually going to do is open up in the finder this stuff folder so you can just see uh, see graphically what's going on and then relate that to what you're doing in the terminal so we have exactly the same contents here let me just put this into list mode we have example.txt the subfolder and the sunrise jpeg image file and that's exactly the same listing that we're getting here from the terminal so again these these two ways of looking at it we're looking at the same information just in two different ways and you know, I could do the moving of example.txt here in the finder, but I'm presuming you already know how to do that, and the point of this is let's learn how to do that inside the command line environment. So, as I said, the command we need here is mv, so we need to, we need to type mv, the name of the command or the program we want to run, and then we need to give it two arguments, actually. The first argument, so we separate the arguments with a space, if you remember, will be the source file, in this case example.txt. So I'd type in example.txt. Now because in this folder there's only one file that begins with with these letters, I can actually just type a few letters starting uh, a few letters of the start of the file and just press tab and it actually completes that for me, which is really quite useful if you've got long file names. So you can just type in this case ex tab and it's going to fill that in for me and it's automatically put the space after that to separate out my next argument and the next argument to the mv command is the destination and in this case it's going to be the folder called subfolder once again I can use this tab file name completion I can just say su and because nothing else starts with su in this folder I just press tab oh no actually I'm wrong um, <laughs> sunrise.jpg and subfolder both begin with su so it's just t- telling me there are multiple choices here um, I want subfolder so I'll just give it another character press tab and we've now constructed this command which is ready to run we're asking it to run the program mv the first argument is the source file example.txt and the destination is subfolder and it's actually put a slash after that that's not strictly necessary but it just helps you to remember that you're moving it into a folder Um, so I'll press enter and that's done it as you see we get no feedback from the terminal saying you know that file was moved doesn't make a noise or anything it just does it and it does it silently. That's the way that many Unix commands work. Uh, so now if I run ls just to verify that change you'll see that example.txt has actually disappeared from the top level. If I run ls 
space subfolder that's going to ask it to list subfolder rather than our current working directory and you can see example.txt has moved in there if I just go over to the finder briefly we can verify that here in the finder just by going into subfolder you can see the example text file has moved there in there as well so there we are that's how we move a file fairly easy you need to do mv source destination now there's one extra thing I need to mention here uh, with MV is that if you want to rename a file there is no separate rename command you actually just use MV and you move it from one file name to another which feels a little bit weird because they you know we, we traditionally see them as separate operations within the GUI but they're actually combined together as one operation so let me just change directory into the subfolder and rename example.txt to say test.txt. In order to do that I just run mv example.txt I just press tab again there quickly to fill that in for me and then the destination in this case is just the new file name so I'll just say test.txt uh, confirm that command if I run ls you'll see that example.txt is now called test.txt so mv is the command we use to move files and it's also the command we use to rename files so let me just change directory back up one level and I'm going to run the command clear to get rid of the uh, output of the display here so we can start afresh with the next command right so we've moved a file uh, now we're going to learn how to copy a file the uh, copying command is called CP again they're, they're very very short and perhaps not very easy to remember if you haven't got used to them yet um, but that just means you do less typing I suppose so to copy a file we simply need to run CP source destination very, very similar in fact almost exactly the same as MV so let me just run LS again to see what I've got uh, if I wanted a copy of this sunrise file I can simply run CP sunrise.jpg to say sunrise 2.jpg run ls again and that's made a copy if we go and verify in the finder there are two copies of that image now if you wanted to copy it into a subdirectory so if I wanted to copy sunrise into subfolder and have to have a copy here in the stuff folder and a copy in the subfolder I can say copy or CP sunrise.jpg and then the destination can be subfolder slash sunrise 2.jpg so here I'm I'm able to put a relative path with the directory separated with that slash if I want to drill down and copy it into a different folder you can also use absolute paths so for example if I wanted to copy sunrise.jpg up to the top level of my, of my hard drive uh, I actually don't and I don't have permission to do that so that's not going to work but just as just as an example to show how you'd use a rel uh, an absolute path you can just say slash and if you if if that if the destination or the source starts with a slash that's considered an absolute path and you have to put all of the directories you go down through the chain to actually find that source or destination file if you don't start it with a slash then the command line is going to assume that you mean something relative to the current working directory which we learned about last time so there we are we've now copied a file I'm just going to cancel that by pressing control and C uh, that's going to just let the terminal know that I didn't want to do that and to cancel whatever it was doing right so we've done MV for moving we've done CP for copying and I've spoken now a little bit about the relative and absolute path names for those source and destinations again don't worry about that too much if that's a little bit confusing for now you will probably get it in, in not too much time because it's fairly fairly obvious once you've sort of got your head around the basics so um, if we want to create a new folder for example from the terminal uh, I'm just going to clear this out again and we'll learn the command mkdir now a folder is often called a directory in command line speak and MK, mkdir stands for make directory it's very simple you just say mkdir space to separate out those arguments and then the name of the directory so I'll call this directory 2 and if I run ls you'll see there's a brand new directory which we can now copy stuff to and, and so on 
Um, there's actually another trick with MKDR. If I wanted to make a series of subfolders with lots of different levels, say if I wanted level 1, level 2, level 3, uh, so level 2 is a folder inside level 1, level 3 is a folder inside level 2, I can actually do that all in one go. If I say MKDIR and give it the command line switch of dash P, that tells it to create any parent dire directories that it needs. I can now make level 1 slash level 2 slash level 3. That's going to make all of the directories level 1 and level 2 and level 3. If I demonstrate to you in the finder what that means, is now I have this folder called level 1, which contains a folder called level 2, which contains a folder called level 3. So if you want to make uh, lots of nested levels of a directory at once, you can use mkdir with dash p to make them all in one command, which is quite efficient. Okay, so we can make directories. If you want to uh, delete a directory which is empty, then you can use rmdir. So if I wanted to get rid of directory 2, I can just run rmdir directory 2, run ls again, and you'll see that directory has disappeared. Now it's worth pointing out that if you try to run rmdir and there's something still left in the folder, even if it's a hidden file, then it won't let you. Um, but we'll come to that, I think, a bit later, because when you start deleting files via the terminal, there's, there's a lot more risks involved. Um, so we'll leave RMD. We'll leave, we'll leave removing directories with stuff in them uh, for a later screencast. For now, let's look at how we delete a single file. Now, the uh, command to delete a file is called RM. Now, before we uh, before we get too um, keen on using this command, we just need to spend a moment to remember that here in the command line, uh, none of the niceties of the Mac OS X trash exist. So if you delete something here from the command line, it won't go to the trash first and you won't get a chance to get it back out. It will just go straight away. So we need to bear that in mind that you need to be careful what you're typing and to understand what you're typing before you run rm from the command line. Having said that, if I wanted to delete uh, this Sunrise 2 because it's a copy and I've decided I don't need it anymore, it is again fairly simple. rm Sunrise 2 Again, that doesn't give us any warning or anything, as I said, so do be careful. Uh, run ls again, and Sunrise 2 has disappeared. Uh, so that's how we can delete a single file. Now, RM has a, like all of these tools actually, has a number of extra switches and, come up and different options you can give it to do different things and to go through and delete lots of files at once. But as I say, well, I think we'll leave that for now, because uh, you start doing that, you, the risks of losing data go up quite a lot. So we'll look at that perhaps later. Um, now I did say that when you run rm to delete a file, it doesn't go to the trash and it pretty much gets permanently deleted. But if you want to use the same technology that's in Finder's secure empty trash, i.e. you want to make sure that that data is not going to be recoverable, it might be financial information or something that you don't want to leave sitting around the disk after you've deleted it, then you can actually use SRM, which stands for secure remove and that uses that, that uses the same system as secure empty trash in the finder to go over that file multiple times and make sure that none of that file is going to be recoverable with any degree of uh, you know reasonable effort so um if i wanted to permanently delete the uh, example text file i've now moved that into the subfolder so i'll just change directory into the subfolder give myself a list of that directory again and if I wanted to now get rid of test.txt and make sure that that data was overwritten many times and it couldn't be recovered I can run srm test.txt and press enter now that takes you'll notice it takes a lot longer to complete that command that's because it is going over that bit of disk seven times and wiping it over and doing it very thoroughly so it will take a very long time on very large files and do bear that in mind but um, SRM is useful. It is useful to be able to do SRM from the command line because you may have something that you want to securely delete, but you have other stuff in the trash that you're not ready to commit to being deleted yet. Uh, and you can go in and use SRM manually from the command line to securely delete something without having to also delete everything else that is in the trash that you might still later want. So that's very useful to, to know, particularly that one 
for securely deleting a single file from the command line without affecting anything that's in the trash. Um, so let's just have a quick, re a quick recap before we uh, finish up. To move files, we use the command mv, and that's source destination, are the two arguments you'll want after that. So it's mv source file, the destination. You can copy files with cp, exactly the same idea, source destination. You can make new directories with mkdir, delete um, empty directories with rmdir, and you can delete individual files with rm. And we've also looked at srm for securely erasing and overwriting those files. Now there's a lot more things that you can do with file management. We've you know, I've deliberately omitted here how to do things recursively, i.e. go through the folder and copy all the items in the folder, or um, or delete all the items in the folder, because uh, I think it's best just to introduce these slowly and we can get to the more advanced switches later. Um, so I think that's, that's everything for now in this uh, roundup of basic file management with the terminal. Now as I said I really would appreciate your feedback on this screencast it would help me to um, work out what the direction of this series is going to be and whether it's whether it's being pitched too easy or too hard or or whatever so I'd really appreciate it if you could send any feedback you do have to feedback at thestealthmac.com and hopefully I'll see you on a future screencast or on a future roundtable episode of the Stealth Mac podcast. So I think uh, there's nothing left to be said then other than um, Thank you for watching and listening, and I'll see you next time.